our war on terror begins with Al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. Take this very firm stand against terrorism. Terrorism and the supposed prevalence of terrorists has shaped political discourse for much of the 21st century. This attempted act of terrorism, an act of pure terror. The so-called war on terror has left us confronted by fear in the everyday. You're letting people come in from terrorist nations. A pervasive sense of danger that has affected the way we communicate, travel, and work. Has the notion of everyday terrorism affected us in ways we haven't yet realized? Are we living in a state of fear? The sight of terrified people fleeing through the streets has become all too common in European cities. Last month, the British capital saw similar scenes. Crowds of people in a busy shopping area believed they were running for their lives, but there was no actual threat. Panic spread as rumors circulated and police arrived. The Western response to this sense of fear can be seen in the changing face of towns and cities. Militarized police have become a prominent feature. Security barriers line roads and herd pedestrians. And an increasing number of security cameras and recording equipment monitor public spaces. France has been in a state of emergency since 2015, when an attack on its capital left more than 130 people dead. In the United States, terrorism and the sources of it have become grounds to alter migration and refugee policy. And if you remember, ISIS said, we are going to infiltrate the United States and other countries through the migration. And then we're not allowed to be tough on the people coming in. But what is the lasting psychological impact of terror attacks? And is the threat of terror actually worse than the reality? 